boys it's a beautiful day today and the reason it's a beautiful day today is because in front of us in this beautiful box right here you guessed it by the title boys we have the new element ifs2 let's get into it Slowly open. Whoo! Look at this thing. Whee! Look at that. Got some stickers. More stickers. Boys, welcome to today's video. Thank you so much for clicking today's video. If you like it, drop a big like on this thing and think about hitting that subscribe button. Like 80% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel, and it's really, it's really mind blowing over here. That's quality content fun times some laughs and a lot of informational stuff hit that subscribe button you're not going to regret it boys thank you for diving into today's video today i'm super freaking excited because we have the element ifs2 conversion kit sitting here in front of us officially licensed by camberg it's it's just amazing it's amazing I mean, what more could you ask for and with today's special video we have a special truck in the background this is the element enduro this is the forerunner version or the trail runner excuse me behind us and you see it's not stock it's uh the farthest thing from stock figure about what better candidate to put that on than well um the element enduro <laughs> guys they're so good with these boxes i mean look at this you get a little like banner right here your journey begins here it, it, guys element shout at them it's like top notch marketing all the boxes the box are and just everything in the design boys look at this box look at this freaking box dude i am amazed on a freaking little scale wooden pallet in here element logos everywhere look at that dude super cool ifs2 independent front suspension conversion we have a new steering rack new symmetrical upper and lower arms look at the ground clearance guys you get a ton more ground clearance like a half an inch this is awesome now, boys, for this, I didn't just want to bring you an unboxing video. I didn't just want to showcase the product. I also wanted to compare the product. Right here in front of us, we have an old classic Element Trail Runner, and this is the stock setup, minus some suspension mods I've done, versus like shocks. There's a sway bar kit in the rear and some longer arms for the back of the truck, but really nothing um, kind of compromising or changing the front other than some shock setup with some shock towers on the top of the rig. I'm going to go ahead and do you in comparison. We're going to go ahead and measure this bad boy see how much ground clearance we have, how much flex we have, and then once we put this new IFS2 on, we're going to tell you how much the difference was between the two. It won't be an exact one-to-one -one comparison because this is not completely stock, but it's generally stock. It just has some shocks on there. Like I was saying, the bottom of the suspension is all the same. I haven't changed any of the suspension arms. So this would be a pretty generally good comparison for you too. If we look at our element enduro here with the IFS1, I'm just going to let the suspension settle. Got a ruler right here, and what we are looking at for our ground clearance is probably like an inch and three quarters. Yeah, I'm looking like a solid inch and three quarters, boys. Wheel clearance to our knuckle, we're probably a solid inch right on the dot. All quite two inches, we're maybe yeah, like an inch and three quarters off the ground right now. Two and a half, um, still got some play, of course, and get up there probably. Right there is where we start maxing out, probably right at the three inches, I would say. Three and a half, a little stretch, but I feel like we definitely have at least three inches of travel right now. The thing that we open the first is a pinball machine. A little skill pinball machine for the garage, boys. That is sick. Whole entire box is the pinball machine. Look at that. Guys, that is so sick. Element top notch. Like, hats off to the freaking marketing team here. Boys, this is so sick. Shout out to Element, man. All right, and in this, we have a nice sticker sheet. We got some cool little scale decals in here, like some GPSs. Um, may get lost, but it won't get stuck. Um, yeah, guys, it's just sick. I like this a lot. Shout out to Element for always having the cool, cool scale stuff. Got our instruction manual right here. We got some screws. As well as a new, looks like center skid plate. Ta da! Look at this. Boys, this is sick. Super freaking cool. Look at those upper control ones. 
the new steering setup on here. The bottom of the control arms right here. It looks like it looks like the ones on the Raptor, honestly. Well done, Element. Well done. This thing is sick. I'm curious how these shocks are gonna do. Very good amount of travel. And then just another tip of the cake here. Element gives you some jack stands. Look at this. All right, boys, let's take a gander at what it wants us to do here. Gate one, we have removed the hardware shown for both sides. Pivot the shock and shock mounts to the side. This will allow to remove the IFS stands. Save the hardware for installation on your chassis. Remove these two screws right here by the shocks. And boys, I can't tell you enough. Magnetic tray. You need a magnetic tray. All right, and it looks like this is going to kind of pop off this little scale frame rail piece. And uh, this is kind of the IFS in all of its glory, boys. Um, yeah, did not get the brake stickers. Um, they're not in the kit either, so I would have liked to see those. But other than that, that's the only complaint I have so far is a little scale uh, brake disc cover sticker. We're going to go ahead and run these shocks for the first little bit. They do appear to have some oil and everything in them too, probably tuned to AE standard. So we're going to go ahead and keep that on there and try it and then probably swap it out later. We're going to go ahead and start by removing the wheels and tires on this unit. Tire one, tire two, remove. Head and dive into the shocks right here. This EcoPower servo is pretty good. This is a WP110, but it's really not strong enough for what I was wanting. So we're gonna go ahead and swap the servo out while we're here to make this truck be as capable as it is. Now the only thing left really holding this system to the truck is going to be the center drive shaft, your um, servo wire holding it back in the ESC box. I already have taken the ESC box off. It's uh, four little screws right here and you can go ahead and get this wire out. And then we have these four screws at the top, one right here, one right here, and two on the other side. Once we have these four screws removed at the front, rotate the truck kind of however you can. And we're going to need to disconnect this uh, stock skid plate right here. They give you a new one to swap this out with. And then take this 1.5 out right here from the center. Something like this guy right here. You should be able to pop this guy towards you. The screws in the top of here, they are 2 millimeter screws. And you're going to find your servo wire right here. You go ahead and pull this guy out from the top. We're going to trace the wire we want out of here. Just make sure you don't lose this little o-ring right here. This is important to sealing your box and making sure it stays waterproof. Next what we're going to do, if you look right here on the inside of this center drive shaft going to the front diff, we're going to go ahead and take this screw out right here. This is a two millimeter screw. It's going to look something just like this. Here at this step guys, this will be kind of the last screw you take off. You're just going to kind of grab right here with your thumb and your index finger at this top control arm and you're going to just kind of shimmy back and forth just like that and this will start to slide off just like this now watch out the back of the truck's going to be heavy so it may fall off your stand kind of just keep shimmying and it should just shimmy out just like that and you're going to take this guy and set him to the side this is your complete ifs1 unit out of the truck but if you guys wanted to use your factory servo what you would do is once you get this kit off you're going to kind of reach from the bottom right here and you're going to take one two three, four screws out, and then you're going to reach up inside of here, kind of turn your servo a little bit, and you see a servo arm, you're going to also take the screw out right here for the servo arm on your servo. Looking at these two side by side, to kind of get my thumb out of the picture here, we can definitely see how much more travel the IFS2 system has over the IFS1, just how much these arms are hanging down on this one compared to this guy, uh, it's just, that's night and day different guys, that's at least like half an inch on here. That's awesome. Really, really cool to see this. We can look, the whole design is different with the whole front skid plate on here and that mount bracket. It looks like we're going to have a completely reversed servo operating system. Uh, servo is kind of like operating from the front now versus where this one's operating from the back. Heads up here at our control arm situation. Excuse the shocks on the back falling right there, but you can kind of see this control arm. Um, the shock is coming through the center of the control arm. Kind of like most IFS systems on today's trucks, like one-to-one -one scale here. Um, really cool to see all that. They definitely changed from a solid um, metal arm with some ball links right there to a solid plastic one. I don't think that'll be an issue, but probably be some upgrades for this later on in time. That's the only difference I see right here. We also don't have this metal bracket connecting us to the top of the knuckle right here. We just have this upper control arm connecting by a ball stud on the top, connecting us to that knuckle. Knuckle design is completely different as well. Looking right here, we can see where we have our um, UCA right there going into it. Um, it's kind of just a whole different design. This does look beefier. 
um, except for the metal part on the top of this one, kind of helping that look more beefier than this one. So kind of looking at this from another angle right here, you can just kind of see this upper control arm design. I'm really happy with how the shock actually comes through the center of the control arm now. Super good versus where kind of this old system, you can kind of see where the shock just mounted from the back side and came up right beside the control arm. Nothing wrong with that. It just kind of limits your steering angle and um, kind of separates the shock position to the back of the um, control arm right here. Kind of not upsetting the geometry, but just in a sense not being as smooth as it could be mounted here in the center. All of the main differences right here. This guy definitely looks more RC style, just kind of like a typical RC car, nothing wrong with that. It still looks really good. It just doesn't look as like one-to-one -one scale. And I can definitely see where Element and Camberg were going for that one-to-one -one scale here because this literally looks like it's off a one-to-one -one truck. It's, it's just really good. Hats off to these guys. Looking from the bottom of each of these units, we see how much wider the IFS2 system is compared to the IFS1. This IFS1 has a small kind of centerpiece right here with this bulkhead mounting at the top. The bottom of the control arms are just a lot smaller, again, because they don't really have a shock mounting to the center of them. So they're able to be smaller, and it just looks completely different, boys. This is just um, kind of crazy to look at side by side. Continuing to the back right here, we can kind of see all the differences here. I still have the skid plate mounted to this guy. Um, we can see how we don't have any of our steering components at the back now. You can see how kind of this has our servo saver here in the back inside of this unit on the IFS1, and the IFS2 is just kind of a lot cleaner and sleeker. Um, doesn't have any of our steering components, servo saver, anything in the back back here. Everything is all front located at the front of the unit. And our final view is going to be the top view right here. We can see how we had this big, nice space to kind of mount a winch or kind of anything we wanted to right here to keep some weight up front. Um, our servo is mounted all the way at the back of this unit, whereas this one's going to be mounted right here on the right side of this unit. You could probably also mount it to the left, I'd imagine, if you wanted to swap that for some reason. Uh, but it looks like Element would like it on the left side of this rig, uh, my right camera angle and that is going to be our deep dive at looking at these two units side by side comparison here we have the ifs2 system with all of its new goodies and everything it's going to be super sick and then boys we have the classic ifs1 it did us some good it brought a new change to the industry i think it's the first rtr um kind of scale rig i want to say that i have acknowledged of um from a major manufacturer that came with an ifs system so this is kind of game changing and really groundbreaking in the RC industry when Element released this IFS1 system. And noting it comes with a metal servo horn now. I think that is awesome with Element. We're gonna pop this guy out and it looks like from this we're able to access our servo horn from the top. For our servo duties for this guy, I'm using a Microtech Pro Amps Bristol Servo. Um, this is just one I had sitting around. This is a BLS 139, if you guys are curious. Super fast, good quality servo. I just kind of uh, took it out of one of my nitro buggies I was racing, and I have it sitting here. So if you're not, I put this bad boy to use. Grab your servo horn, kind of bring him up the center of here, and go ahead and kind of connect it just where you feel like it's going to be best. Note the orientation of the steering angle. Make sure it's pretty straight. And know that this guy is going to sit in just like this. So you kind of want to plan for that accordingly. Add this guy into the top of the servo. I push him through the front just like that. Would take and put some blue Loctite on the end of your screw here like I did. Just to ensure that this does not come loose. You don't want to put a lot. Just a kind of a little dab will do you. Cut the remote on and kind of see where the servo is going to lay once I go ahead and connect it to the truck. With that in my head, I'm going to go ahead and only put two screws in here. I'm going to kind of caddy corner the screws, one in this corner, one in the other corner, just to help hold the servo for right now, but also to make sure that whenever I do, if I have to take this back loose to change the servo angle, whenever I put my electronics together, I'm not having to take all these screws back out. You are ready to set this on the truck, boys. I am freaking excited. Let's get it. You are ready to go ahead and put this guy in the truck. What we're going to go ahead and do is kind of slide him up the center like this and kind of wiggle our way. We have to pry this other frame rail out and make sure it clicks up in the center right here, just like that. And that guy's going to fit nicely in the center. Then my drive shaft have fallen out, but that's not really that big a deal. What we're going to go ahead and do is get our wires out of the way. Go ahead and take this drive shaft and slide him back up in the center right here. And just as we said before, you might want to rotate this so you see this little hole. What we're going to have to do here is pull this guy back out a little bit and turn this drive shaft so we can get this screw into here. I'm taking my two millimeter with this screw and I've also put some blue Loctite on this as well so it doesn't come loose. Once we have this tightened, note the orientation. This plastic sleeve can slide over top of this little metal sleeve where my fingernail is. You just want to make sure you kind of rotate that and get the orientation correct. Take your countersunk screw, put them on your two millimeter, and we're going to go ahead and thread this 
through this shock tower right here, get it all the way through, and then it will thread into this IFS unit. Take our second counterfunk screw and go ahead and set it in the shock tower as well. Once you have the screws in this side, you've repeated the process on the other side, you are basically mounted up. You can go ahead and flex the suspension. Now we're going to move to the front of the truck. They're giving us two options here. We have this one, which is kind of like the standard one that was on the last unit, or we also have this new one, which is uh, going to be a little bit sleeker, possibly like the old style. It looks like each side is identical on this guy, so you can go ahead and just slide him in here. Just like that, and get that guy slid in here. And now we can go ahead and put our other two screws in the front right here. We are basically all assembled. You have your four screws here, your four screws here, and your drive shaft is connected, boys. We just have our skid plate to put on. But I want to notice something. If you could kind of see how light the front of this truck is now, um, it's kind of insane, the uh, difference in weight of the two. We're going to take our new skid plate. It has a little notch cut out for the drive shaft. Um, it's going to go in the truck just like this, kind of how you took the other one out. You're going to take and slide these two guys into here. And then this is going to help fit perfectly right there on the bottom. I'm going to take two of our countersunk screws and run in the bottom right here. Take our 1.5 millimeter um, screws and run them through this guy right here. One through this side, one through this side. Let's go ahead and push that in and make that level. Thread that in. Just like that, with these two screws ran all the way in here, your two screws on the bottom. Boys, you are done. IFS2 installation complete. Congratulations. I knew you guys could do it. What we're going to do next, though, is you're going to go ahead and take your servo wire, kind of route it however you'd like. I don't know if you want to go over here this way or whatever you'd like to do to kind of get it routed maybe down the frame rail over here. And then you're going to slide it down in this little slot to ensure you still got some waterproofing. If it works, everything goes well. We are ready to rock and roll. We're going to go ahead and get our wire management taken care of. Let's go ahead and hit the throttle for the first time and see how this bad boy rolls. Uh, that's not okay. It seems that I have installed my uh, gear in the center, my pinion, backwards. So um, I'm going to dive into taking this guy apart and I'll be right back. I have a little line right here by my thumb if you can see so this uh big gear can't go on this side and flip kind of like it needs to uh this is only cut one direction so um yeah i'm not sure what the deal is here um if you kind of like hit the throttle you'll notice this guy see he turns uh to the right turning forward up uh, turns to the right um and that makes the wheels go forward this way towards me I found my stickers. Uh, stickers are on the inside of the wheel, so they were just put on backwards. Not a big deal. I'll uh, get those switched. I switch the remote, then it makes those wheels go backward and these go forward uh, if I switch the throttle input. So, kind of at a loss here. If you run into this problem, you will notice uh, this little guy right here is now deleted. Um, and what you're going to do here is take that little nipple on this side right in front of this ring gear and you're going to chop him off. Um, my uh, weapon of choice here was an exacto. I went and just cut that guy off right there. Now this goes on the left side and now when the wheels spin this um, goes forward and it doesn't kind of fight itself and make the truck just do weird things. Here we can kind of give you guys a close-up look with the skid plate off of how this steering system works. Super good, super smooth. I am concerned about dirt and contaminants getting in here though. It does have a little bit of grease on here so I'm concerned it kind of just Dirt. It's probably just be a service item. We just have to clean this out probably after every other run or so. But really cool, guys. Really cool to see that system kind of in function right there if you were curious what it looked like. Now we're good, boys. Everything is going the right way. Boys, that is it. IFS2 conversion complete on this element. This thing looks sick. Super freaking scale with the way the control arms and the shocks are laid out. I'm really happy with the overall quality of this kit and though just the thought behind it. Um, quality control, I would say not the best just right off the bat, not to knock anybody, but that pinion gear kind of being backwards there with the line. I wish they wouldn't have put that little indent there. I know it was to help you put the one gear where it's supposed to go, but really, um, I don't know what the deal was here. I haven't ever touched the back diff in this guy, so I'm not sure if you guys are having a problem with that. If you are, drop a comment below. I hope I was able to help some people if you're confused and like, what the heck is going on? And then also the little, um, 
stickers right here being backwards on this being kind of nitpicky and picking some things on the truck that's the only two complaints i have about the whole kit other than that this thing is freaking sick and i am ready to hit some jumps and some trails with it and looking over from the bottom of the truck you can kind of see the whole layout here the skid plates looking really nice kind of molds back into the factory stuff here and everything looks super legit on this thing All right, boys, now that we got some drop test complete in this thing, let's go ahead and look at how much flex we have compared to the other one. Same box here. Um, let's go ahead and put it on its side. Let's see what we got here for this amount of flex. We got a little bit. We get a little bit. Definitely looking freaking cool, though. Look at that. A little bit of flex. Maybe not as much as the other one. Um, kind of just because of the way I had the shock set up with the higher towers, but we definitely have at least that three inches again from this box. Well, three and a half, really. Um, this is, it's really impressive guys. I'm really happy with this thing. Also, I want to pinpoint here how we have a lot bigger stance. Like we're sticking out past the back tire a little bit and this is sick. We have a lot bigger stance than we did last time. I'm really liking this. We we're almost kind of tucking this tire all the way under the fender, maybe just like a 10th of an inch sticking out. But now, um, holding this body center right here, boys, we are sticking out. Look how wide that is. That is freaking sick guys. Cool IFS2 kit on the Raptor, ready to hit the trail. Boys, our body's sagging a little bit here because I don't have the shock post on the top, but overall that is the IFS2 kit in depth, full install and comparison when the IFS1 kit, uh, super good quality. Uh, the changes they made were phenomenal. I think it's gonna help this kit handle amazingly. It gives you extra ground clearance. I really like the way the steering servo is set up with the saver and just the whole mechanism there is a lot better, I believe. And I just think this kit's gonna perform 10 times better than it did before. And also you have that new scale realism where the thing just looks freaking the scale. It just looks awesome. Can't wait to see what new products come out for it. I'm sure Knight's Customs is gonna have some skid plates for you guys. I know in the meantime, we're working on some products as well to come out for it to help kind of change it up and give you some different options here, maybe some different shock mounting points and just et cetera, et cetera, and just options everywhere. Boys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it brought you a lot of value and some entertainment um we're gonna hopefully get out there it's absolutely pouring right now like an absolute downpour so we can't get outside today and test this unit but in the coming days when the weather's a little better we're definitely gonna get out here jump this guy test it and kind of let you know what my thoughts are on the ifs2 kit hope you enjoyed this if you want this go to amanhobbies.com pick up this kit shout out to amen hobbies not sponsored by them just good service good products and really shout out the element boys taking it another level here with the brocks the packaging and just the instructions and everything they do about trying to make this stuff as scale as possible they're really i think bringing the next level for the scale rigs for day morning night afternoon whenever and however you're checking out this video thank you so much for watching it i can't wait to show you what this thing does outside on the track